you know all about using firewalls to secure your AVD networks, conditional access and MFA to protect all of your identities, and Defender to protect your operating systems. But do you know the number one thing admins like you are not doing to secure your cloud PCs? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what that is and how to fix it. And the first thing is you need to understand your requirements for AVD and Windows 365. That way you can configure the operating system and the apps, and it's really here where the biggest mistake is made. Your users end up with too much access to too much stuff. Don't believe me? Well, if your users just need a web browser and office apps to do their jobs, then they shouldn't be able to also open a command prompt, right? But we can't exactly remove a native tool like this, or can we? So let's dive into the key areas to secure your cloud PCs with four essential tools that'll help you lock things down. And I think the third one is really gonna surprise you. Now, my approach to managing things is to take care of the OS image, not the hosts. That's because the user's data is in FSLogix or in OneDrive, and the users might end up on VM 6 today and 17 tomorrow, which means that the cloud PCs themselves are actually disposable. And that means that I can update my image anytime I want to, build new hosts, and then throw the old ones away. But first we need to clean up the OS image so all of those native Windows apps and tools that aren't needed are gone so the users can't access them. Now this is really easy with the AVD optimization tool, which you could download from this GitHub repo. Or you could just go over here to the AVD portal and look at custom image templates. And I've done a few videos on this feature already if you wanna learn more. When you get here to the customization screen, click for the built-in scripts, and here you'll find a list of most of the tools and configurations that you'd want in a VDI image. You can add languages, configure FSLogix, set up Teams AV redirection, and down here, you'll find the AVD optimizations. Just check the boxes to optimize Windows however you want, and the next step is to remove any of those native Windows apps that you don't need in your environment. And at the bottom, it's always a best practice to include Windows updates. That means when your VMs are built, they're already set to go, so you don't have to patch them later. When you're done with all that, just click Next to complete the process, and then don't forget to build your new image. Now with that cleaned up, the next thing to think about is your user experience. Now most of you are still giving your users a full desktop, but I'd encourage you to consider switching to remote applications. Remote apps only display the application window to the users, so the full desktop isn't there for them to get to the start menu or the run command or other stuff. But they are still signed in to a normal Windows session, and they could get to things if they know how. So I'll give you some tools to protect yourselves in just a minute. Here in the AVD portal, go to your host pool and then to your application groups, and let's add a new one. Give it a name and click Next. Then click here to add your applications. And this will be done from the Start Menu's list of apps. And if there isn't a listing in the Start Menu for your particular app, you can change it to use a file path. Or you could even package your apps and sideload them with something like App Attach. And that'll actually make your OS image kind of disposable too. When you're done with all that, on the next page, you can set the app icon and then click Add and just repeat for all the other apps that you want to share. And as for the assignments, since the apps are assigned to the users directly, the cool thing here is that you really only need one remote app group for the entire pool. Just remember to register the app group with a workspace, otherwise the apps won't be visible to the users. Here you'll wanna enable AVD monitoring insights, and then on the next page, add your tags like all Azure experts do, and create. Then go back to the remote app groups and then you want to remove the users from the desktop app so that way the only thing they can use are the remote applications. So now that your image is optimized and it's locked down with remote applications wherever possible, let's talk about those three tools that are going to help you secure your host. The first tool is FSLogix Application Masking. 
which uses this app rule editor to create an allow or deny list of applications. So even in those full desktops, your users will only see and launch things that you give them access to. You can find this installer in the same zip package where your FS Logics agent came in. Just select from the list what you want them to use and hit scan at the bottom. And that'll discover all the executables and registry settings and config files related to those apps. Then you just click save and you'll end up with these two files. Then you can assign the rules to the users and for this to work across every different host in your pool, we have to distribute these files. And the best way to do that is usually group policy. Just put all your rules into a file share and then set up a GPO like this one that'll copy the files down to the host exactly where we need them. And now, even if a user knows the path to get to an executable somewhere else on the system, they won't even be able to launch it. Now, if you'd prefer something a little more native, then you might want to think about Windows App Locker. This user-focused tool has actually been around since Windows 7 and it lets you specify the apps that are allowed to run and how they're allowed to run. Now for this to work, you'll need to make sure that this application identity service is running on all of your different hosts. Then go to your group policy management console, create a new policy, give it a name and then edit. Now go to the computer policy, windows and windows security settings, and then the app locker policies here. The first thing you want to do is click right over here and then enable any of the four features that you want to control. And you can always choose the audit mode to just see how things are in the environment before you switch over to enforcement. Then the first thing you want to do is create a new installer policy and set this for deny. Then search for your list of AVD users and put that in. Next, you want to select the path here as star dot star which means that none of these AVD users will be able to install anything on your host at all, period. Click next, and this is where you can set an exception if you need to, but we'll skip that. Then you give it a name and a description and create. Now, if this is your first AppLocker policy, you'll also be prompted here for these default rules and click yes to that. Now let's go and create an executable rule. And it's really the same process, but Let's click here and edit by a publisher. On the next screen, browse to any executable you want and you'll see that all displayed here. And you can use this slider to decide what level the rule should apply. And I'll stick with the app level here so no version of command prompt can be run by these users. I don't need any exceptions again, give it a name and create. Now let's add one final rule for the Edge browser to always be allowed. And I'll do this by the path. Then when you're done with all that, just assign the GPO to your AVD VMs and you're good to go. Now the third tool here is almost exactly like AppLocker, but completely different. And that's Defender Application Control. It's a similar kind of technology to AppLocker, but it's newer and more advanced. AppLocker controlled the user's layer while the Defender controls the whole computer. And this has features like code integrity, which can control the apps and the drivers that can actually run on the computer too. And you can manage it from Intune, Configman, PowerShell, or GPO. And it does get regular continuing updates, unlike AppLocker, which is still a great tool to use, but I'd use them together for the best results. So now let's use Defender to make sure only known good, trusted installers and code can be run on your host. Here in the Intune portal, let's go to Endpoint Security. Then click right over here, and then you wanna select the Manage Installer tab, then click Add. And this is going to grant Microsoft permissions to set up a Intune management extension that's gonna make all of this work. Then go to App Control for Business, create a policy, give it a name and then a description and click Next. And now we need an XML file to tell Windows exactly what it can and can't do. And thankfully, we don't have to write the XML ourselves. You can go to this page, the App Policy Control Wizard, and that's linked in the video description. Then you can just click right over here and download the wizard. Once you've got it installed, click here to create a policy, and you're gonna want a multi-policy at the top and a base policy in the middle. Later, you can add on to this with a supplemental policy if you like. 
Here on the next page, you'll want to use the signed and reputable mode. This means only trusted publishers and code will be able to run. Click next, turn on the managed installer. So Intune management is going to work. And at the bottom here, it's in auto mode by default, but you can remove that, which means enforcement mode. Click next, and it's gonna create these two files. Back here in Intune, you wanna click this button and upload the XML file, then click next. And I don't really have any scopes here, so click next again. And then you wanna click and assign it to a particular group. Now remember, Defender controls the devices, so the group we want is one of your AVD session hosts. Then create. And the final tool is of all of your third-party application manager tools, like Recast Application Manager or PS App Deploy and a hundred others. And if you're using a third-party tool like that, then you shouldn't be installing any apps in your images at all and leave all that to your tool. Now I'd still recommend using AppLocker and Defender policies, even with these third-party tools, to make sure that users don't have access to more things than they need. And that reminds me, there's a whole lot more that you can do to secure AVD right over here, and happy learning.